I'm going to show a really great new extension for Genially made by Patrice at Escape. It allows you to switch items on and off on different Genially pages and even to uh, take items from one page to another so you can put them in your inventory basically and use them on a different slide. You were able to do this with uh, other extensions before but this one makes it much much easier. So I'll show you how to do that. First, I'm going to show you a few examples. So here's a really easy example. So this is just an on off switch. So we turn it on here. And now if we go to the next page, then the light bulb is on. And I can show you if I turn it off, then the light bulb is off. And the amazing thing is with this, you can even do this in a different presentation. So I've got my two presentations up here. So I've got the one with just the light bulb in it. Now it is off. But if I go over here and I switch it on and I need to kind of refresh this page. So if I go in and out of it, it has turned this light bulb on as well. So if I go back over here, I turn it off. I go back into the other presentation and I can also just refresh it by hitting the um, web address there. And you can see it has turned it off. So this is great. and You can make quite complex uh, things with it. Okay, another one you can do is change the position of things. So here you can choose uh, which way you want the pick to be. And then on the next page, it has still remembered uh, what you've chosen. Another thing you can do is collect items. So in this case, we've got kind of a little escape game where you need to find some nuts for the squirrel and you need a key for the door. Here we've got our nuts. So I click on them. I've collected them in the inventory and if I go back um, here to my door, you can see the nut is still in my inventory. So even though these are the same pages that I was in before, now I've got this nut with me. So let's also find the key. So here's my key in the gra grass. So I go back to my door and now I can take the key and drag it onto the door and the door opens. Isn't that nice? And the same with the squirrel. I can drag the nut to the squirrel and my squirrel goes to sleep. And I can even have two objects that need to be used on the same page. So if I start again here, I collect a nut, I collect a key. And now I'm on this page where I need to open the door and to get rid of the squirrel, which is protecting the door. So I can do it in any order. I can put the nut on the squirrel, I can put the key and then I win if I have completed these two items. But you need to keep in mind if you're having two items on one page, they both need to be done at the same time. Because if I go out of the page and back in again, then all the things are back in their old place. So you will have to collect the key and the nut and then open both of those. So you can't just do the, the door first and then the scroll. For that, they would need to be on different pages. You can also use this to automatically progress something. So here we've got our little quiz and I can answer the questions in any order. So let's start with the second one. So then it takes me to this find activity. So I need to look around with my light and I find the correct one. And hidden on this page is a button, which means that automatically when I now go back, I've got this check mark here on this activity. So the same here with this quiz. When I go to write, um, I got both of them ticked off. I don't have an overall feedback, so I don't have a message saying, well done, you've completed all the activities, but at least I can tick them off and it is much easier to use than uh, Sakefe, which was the other one where you can do something similar. Okay, so now we come to the part how to do this. So there are quite a few different templates in this presentation. So download this presentation and then add all the blue pages that you need by clicking add page and then finding this presentation in your Genialise. So first of all, I'm going to show you the kind of simple light on off button and I'll just show you over here how it is done. So we've actually got two different light switches and we've got the red button and the green button. So we just need to group them together. So we've got this red button here it needs to be grouped with a text box and this text box needs to have the name of the variable. So in this case, it has the French name for light bulb in it because that's the one that 
turns on a light bulb. So if you are using this extension for several objects, always make sure that you change all the names because then it knows which one goes together. So it knows, for example, here that this red box goes with this name, the green box goes with this name. And then on the next page, this is also linked to the same name. So it realizes that this is what we're turning on and off while the pig, for example, here, you can see it is grouped with the name for pig in French. So it knows it goes with this activity. So always make sure you rename it. So the best way of doing it is to duplicate, duplicate the whole uh, template and just change all the words where it says variable to the name of your item. So it can be any name that you want. Uh, so pick or light bulb or multiple choice or whatever you want to call your game as long as long as you know which one goes with which activity and it, it needs to be spelled exactly the same uh, in all those boxes. Because you're grouping them with this name of the variable, you can't group any of these boxes with another text box. So be careful with that. So your reward cannot be a text box coming up saying well done. But a way around it is to to write a text box with your message and then take a screenshot of it and this way it will then count as a picture and not as a word anymore okay so as you can see here we've got the red button that's the off button and the green button is the on button so and this is not just because it turns the light on and off but also because it turns the variable on and off so as soon as I click on this green area, it will know that now anything that is grouped with this name of this variable is turned on. And it doesn't matter on which page it is or even if it's on a different uh, Genially presentation. But on all the pages, you also need this yellow orangey box here. And there are two versions of it. So I'll show you over here. We've got this yellow box this is if you just want uh, it to remember for one session so that means as soon as you turn off this browser it will forget that you turn on the light basically if you use the more orange box it will remember it next time you turn on your computer as long as you're on the same computer so it won't remember it on other computers. It's not saved in the presentation. It's saved, I guess, in your cookies on your computer that it's turned on. And that's why it then also works on another presentation, like here, because it still remembers uh, on this computer and in this browser that I've turned it on. So decide which one you want to use, either the yellow one or the orange one. But you need one of them on all your slides where you're using this extension good then the the red and green button you don't necessarily need to have the red button because if you've got an activity where you want the players just to turn something on and then it it always stays on so for example if they open a door and you want the door to stay open after that then you don't really need the red one you need at least the green one so this is the switch and then you've got these other two see-through red and green boxes they are the ones that need to be grouped with the item that gets turned on or off so you see here the trick of turning on the light is really i've got two light bulbs one that's glowing and one that isn't so as soon as i click the green switch on this page then this green picture comes on on if i click the red one the red one comes on so it, whenever the variable light bulb is turned on this one appears in on every slide where it is so i can have this um, light bulb on all my slides if i want to turn the light on on all of them at the same time and the same with the pigs here so you've got two different versions of the pig and depending on what you've chosen over here if you turned on the upside pig or the, the downside pig then it remembers it on the next page as well. So that's the this the simple version. And you just need um, the button, the the yellow 
code box and then something that gets turned on and again you don't need to have the off button as well if you just want it to stay on you can have them all on the same page so you could have this light bulb on the same page as the switch obviously and also the red and the green switch switches don't need to be grouped they just need to be grouped with the name of the variable but they don't need to be grouped with the object behind it but you need to make sure that they're always the top layer so make sure that you go here into put an order and choose top layer so because this will be the area that will be sensitive to click if you want to make it sh smaller because for example you only want it to go on if they click on this little blue circle here you can ungroup it make the green area much smaller but then remember to group it again with the word otherwise it will not work you group them together and now i can put it on here so now i've made my area much smaller so it will now only come on if i click on this blue area and you can see the the hand changes there so now i can turn it on and over here i can turn it back off again now i show you the version where things get turned off and on automatically so for that you need the template with a lot of black boxes on it uh, which is this one here so this is an extra addition to it and you can see that things get turned off and on automatically so you you see down here out auto on and auto off so let's say we want auto on this is the one that i used for the quiz here so you see here that as soon as the player gets to this page which is at the end of my quiz then the auto on find is turned on so the variable name is finds so if i go back into my overview here you can see here are my two tick marks and this one is named find so that means as soon as the player gets to the end of this quiz no matter if they click on the button or not this gets turned on automatically and you could have the same that it automatically turns off so if for example you want uh, there to be a dead end where the player loses an item then you could just put the auto off button on that page okay now we get to the version where you pick up items so for this i've gone into my empty presentation here so it has all the items in it that i want to turn on and off but it hasn't got any of the codes yet so i can show how i did it so first of all i would set up all the pages and all the items you need so for example here i've got my scroll so it's the before and after scroll and also my door the before uh, no before and after door and i've also got my items here so this is all uh, based on a template uh, from genially apart from the door so i've got my nuts in here and then i've got a key hidden over here so the first thing we need to do is to prepare the title page so go into the template here and you need um, the stuff from the title page so we need let's say in this case we just want it for the one session so yellow box and the black box so the title page over here so this resets everything that means that every time you start this game you want um, the all the invent inventory items to be lying on the floor so in this case the nut to be in the tree and the key to be on the ground um, so that if two players for example play on the same computer they then can start again and that also means that if you play test this you always need to start from this page so it gets reset in this case i've got two items namely the key and the nut so i want to duplicate the black part here and I want this to be called key and nut. So one is called key, one is called nut. So I need to remember now that I need to rename all my items with these two names. So it's resetting both of them. Then I want to create the inventory. So um, let's take our key, we make an extra copy of it and we stand it upright and it goes over here in the corner and I also need a nut let's put them the nut over here let's make it a bit smaller so it looks as if it's actually in my 
pocket. Um, here we go. So this corner is now going to be my inventory. I mean, I could also have just um, a shape in the back so it's kind of set off a bit more. Okay, so here's my inventory. And I now need, again, a yellow box and a green box. So put them over here. So the yellow box just needs to be anywhere on the page, doesn't matter. The green box, I need two of them because I've got two items. And again, I need to rename them. So we've got key and nut. So I now want to group the nut one with the nut. Uh, let's do it this way. So I highlight them both and group them. And <coughs> the key with the key one. There we go. I could resize um, this green box, but the players won't see it anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, and I put them both in my inventory. And now I'm going to copy the whole lot. So the two items and my inventory box. Let's see if I can do all this. And also the yellow box up here. I copy it all and I put this on all my slides. So wherever I want the player to be able to see the inventory, I put this box. So it's good to prepare all your inventory item at the beginning and put them in the box in the corner of all your slides. It just makes it much easier than doing it bit by bit. And also it means that now the key and the nut will always be in the same position on whichever slide I am. Otherwise it looks, looks a bit weird if the key is kind of jumping around and changing position in the in inventory. We don't really want that. Okay, so what this means now is that when the variable nut is turned on, this nut in the inventory will be visible on all the pages. And when the variable key is turned on, the key will be visible in the inventory in all pages. So now I need to go onto the page where I pick up my items. So let's start with the key and I need all the items from this green template here, but again, only choose either yellow or orange. Um, so let's go to the key. So I put it on here. Actually, I've already got a yellow uh, one, so I don't really need this. And I need the red one here. This means that when I pick up the key, this thing will become invisible. So what I want to be become invisible is the key on the ground, because once I've picked it up, I don't want it to be there anymore. I want it to be in my pocket instead. So I group this red box with the key. But again, I need to change the name to key. And here's my button that I need to press. So this is where the players will click on. And well, I want them to click onto the key. So I put it here, but I put it to the top layer. So the key is hidden behind it. So let's try this out. So the, at the moment, my inventory is empty. The key is still on the ground. When I click on it, it gets turned on over here and it gets turned off over there, which is exactly what I want. And if I go onto any other page, it is now turned on in all the pages, which is perfect. Now I want to be able to use the key. So I need to go to my purple template here and I need all these different items. So I need all these boxes, there you go. And you need this yellow box. This one is different from the other yellow box. So make sure that you've got this as well. So in this case, I need to end up with two yellow boxes. One is for the take it uh, extension, which allows you to take items. But we are also using another extension here, which is DND, which allows you to have interaction between items. What we want to do is we've got the object number one, which is our key. So I want to group this with my key. So it should be the key, the green box, the object box and the name key all together. And the target will be my door. So this here, the key lock, this is where I want the key to go. Oh, no, actually, I want it on the closed door. So I want the key to go onto the locked door to open it. So I want to group them together. But I also want this door to disappear as soon as I use the key. 
because I want the open door to appear instead. So I also want it to turn off. So I group together the target, the door, the off, in this case also the writing there, and I group them all together. These, these boxes can be grouped with writing because they don't have a text box with them. So that's okay. And um, I've also got the on button and I need two of these. So I copy and paste. So I've got two on buttons, one on button. Uh, I've already had one here. All right. So one on button, I want to group with the open door because that's what I want to appear once I use the key. I put them next to each other here so you can see it better. The other on button, I want to, to group with this if off variable. And again, I need to change it. It is called key at the top so it knows it all goes together. So what this does is that if this is turned on by combining the key and the door, then this black box gets into play, which turns off the variable, which means as soon as I've used it, the key is taken out of the inventory on all my pages, which makes sense because you've used it in the key, so you don't need it anymore. It will be back on the ground. So if the players come back to this page, they would find the key again, which is kind of maybe it doesn't make so much sense for the story. But on the other hand, it means that if they use the key too early, for example, and they still need it somewhere, they could go back and pick it up again. So it's not that bad. Okay, so I want this on to be, be grouped with this black box and the word key. There we go. Before I try it out, I need to make sure that this key here is movable. So I click on it and go on my hand, which means that the players ca can still move it around when they're in play mode. So let's have a look. So here I've got my key in inventory. I can go onto it and drag it around. If I put it anywhere, nothing happens. But if I put it on the door, then this door disappears and this door appears, which obviously looks a bit weird when it jumps over there. So I want them all to be in the same place. And to make sure that they're lined up properly, I can go here to transparency and just make one of them slightly transparent. So I can now line them up really nicely. So they're exactly on top of each other. Then I make it full visibility again. So now I can use the key again and I put it on there and it looks as if the door opens. Very nice. And I can then do exactly the same with the nuts. So I want the nut to disappear here and to appear there. And then here with the squirrel, I want the sleeping squirrel to appear and the um, awake one to disappear. So it looks as if it's gone to sleep. If you are using different objects on different pages, like it is here. So the squirrel or the nut is used with the squirrel on a different page than the key. In that case, keep using the same number for these items here. So the on one, object one, and so on. Keep using this one. But if you want both of them to be used on the same page, then each of them needs to have a different number. So knows which object needs to go into which uh, lock, so to speak, or into which target area. So I'll show you over here. Um, so here's the example where I've got a door that needs to be opened and the squirrel needs to go to sleep. So you can see I've used object one and this kind of light pink here with the door, the key and the open door. While the squirrel here, I've used object two and target two and so on and the darker red with the squirrel. And also I need to have in that case two of those black boxes, one for the key, one for the nut, and each of them again needs to be grouped with a different on button. I can now also add um, this rabbit here. So this is my general feedback. So if I ungroup this, you can see it's grouped with this black box here, which says general on, which means it will only come up if both items have been 
um, successfully combined. So the key with a door and the nut with a squirrel. Then this one will come up. So this is my winning picture, so to speak. But it will not work if, for example, the players find the key and come here and open the door. When they leave the page again, then the door will be closed again. So then they would need to have both the nut and the key together and use them at the same time um, without leaving the page in between for this general feedback to come on. 